Hey cool kids, Mr. David here. I hope you're having a blast of a week. I am so excited you're here this morning. Last week we started this really cool new series called Summer Playlist. And the Summer Playlist is a series talking about uh, the psalms that King David wrote for God. And last week we talked about how we should worship God because he is amazing. He is powerful. He is above everything. Everything you see around you, he made out of nothing. The trees, the stars, the sun, the everything around us, God made out of nothing. And he loves you. The God who made everything loves and cares about you. And he came and died on the cross for you you. That is so amazing. This week, we're going to be talking about another psalm. And this is a psalm that's a lot different. It's a psalm when things go bad, when things don't seem to be happening how we want them to happen, when th when bad things happen to good people. Let's read this psalm, and then we will be right back here. Psalm 13, 2. How long must I worry? How long must I feel sad in my heart? How long will my enemy win over me? Have you ever felt like that? Have you ever been sad? Have you ever been worried? Have you ever felt like the enemies were winning? All the bad people were winning? Well, that's exactly how David felt. King David, when he wrote that psalm, he felt like everything was going wrong. And he felt like bad things were happening to good people and good things were happening to bad people. And he said, how is that fair? And that's what we're going to be talking about today. But before we do that, let's go into a time of worship. Let's remember how powerful and good God is. And we are going to worship him for that. Here we go. You are with me in 
great job with that worship. God loves it when you sing him praises, and he is worthy of our praises. Now, we are going to go into our time of prayer, and I want you to talk about things that that you feel like God needs to know. I want you to talk about things that, that you want to pray about that seem hard right now. And I also want you to talk about praises, good things that are happening in your life. And pray about that in your class, and then we will be right back here. Great job with that prayer. It's so important for us to be in prayer, to spend time talking to God. That's what prayer is, is talking to God. Prayer is especially important when we are struggling, when things don't seem to be fair and when they don't feel right. I bet there's been times where you've been sad. I bet you've lost somebody you loved or a pet, or uh, maybe you've been scared. Maybe you didn't know what was going to happen next, and you've wondered, man, God, do you are you there? Do you love me? Do you care about me? Are you listening to my prayers? And everybody has those thoughts. And sometimes it leads us to wonder, does God care about us at all? And sometimes it wonder, uh, it makes us wonder, why do does God allow bad? things to happen? Why can't just good things happen all the time? Well, that's a really tough question. And it's a question that that people have talked about for a long time. But I think if we watch our Bible story for today, it'll help us to remember what God's plan is and why God does things the way he does. Let's watch this video. Stories of the Bible Jesus' Sacrifice This is Jesus hey who is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. While Jesus was on earth, he taught everyone about God's love and healed people from their sickness. He did many miracles like calming storms and even raised people from the dead. Uh, wahoo! The Jewish leaders and teachers did not like what Jesus was doing or how he claimed to be the Son of God. And so they made a plan to arrest him to get rid of him once and for all. Judas, one of Jesus' disciples, agreed to betray Jesus Come in, come in. And give him over to the religious leaders for some money. Jesus was in a garden praying, and Judas showed the man who Jesus was. Jesus was arrested and taken to the rulers of the land so that they could decide what to do with him. Jesus was presented before the high council, and they asked him if he was the Messiah, the Savior of the Jews. They asked him if he was claiming to be the Son of God. You say that I am. And the council was furious and they shouted that Jesus was guilty and he deserves to die. So they took Jesus before the Roman ruler Pilate and he heard the case against Jesus. Pilate didn't think that Jesus had done anything wrong. Huh, seemed okay to me. They found him to be innocent. So Pilate said, that he would punish Jesus and then release him. But the crowd kept screaming louder and louder, crucify him, we want him dead. And because of the pressure of the crowd, Pilate turned Jesus over to the Roman soldiers to be crucified. Jesus was hurt and spit on, his clothes were torn and taken from him, and a crown made out of thorns was put on his head. He was beaten so badly that he could barely stand on his own, and then he was forced to carry his cross so far up a mountain that he needed help because he could not do it on his own.
Once Jesus made it to the place where he would be crucified, called the skull, the soldiers around him nailed him to the cross and waited for him to die. While Jesus was hanging on the cross, many people shouted to him, If you really are the Son of God, save yourself from the cross. But Jesus knew he had to die to forgive his people for their sins. At noon, darkness fell across the whole land. Three hours later, Jesus took his last breath and finally died. At that very moment, the curtain in the temple that separated the priests from God's holy place tore in two. A soldier watching the whole thing said, This man truly was the Son of God. Then a righteous man named Joseph came and placed Jesus' body in a tomb. Three days passed and it seemed that there was no hope. But very early on Sunday morning, the woman who cared for Jesus went to go visit his body and found that his tomb was empty and that he was no longer there. Ah! Don't be afraid, said an angel. He is not here. He is risen. At this, the woman remembered that Jesus had told them that he would rise again on the third day. Woohoo! and ran to go tell the disciples what they had seen and heard. Huh? hey -oh. Ah! And then for the next 40 days, Jesus appeared to his disciples and many others and showed them that he was alive and well. <laughs> he taught them that what he did was the only way that they could be forgiven and be with God forever. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. What an amazing story. That is the most important story of all time. It's the most important story in the Bible. It's the most important story for our lives. Jesus died on the cross to take away our sins. And right before Jesus died, he was scared. He was worried. He was nervous. He didn't know what was going to happen. And he knew how painful and how bad it was going to hurt to be rejected by the people, to, to die on the cross, and worst of all, to take all the sin, shame, and guilt of every person forever on himself. He was so scared. And, and I, I know he knew what the plan was, but it also was really scary. You see, we're going to have times like that where we're really scared and when things hurt and when we wonder why someone had to die, why our pet had to run away or why our pet had to die, why we had to move or, or why something bad had to happen in our lives. And we just wonder, why did God let that happen? And what we see in Jesus' life is that sometimes things have to happen for God to help other people. You see, just like Jesus, dying on the cross was a bad thing. He knew it was going to hurt and it was going to be painful. But Jesus did it because he knew is what God needed from him, what his Father needed from him. And sometimes things are going to happen in our lives that we don't understand. And we have to trust that God has a plan for us. We have to trust that God will work everything out for, the, for our good. That's exactly what God promised us. Let's check out another scripture for today. Romans 8, 28. We know that in everything, God works for the good of those who love him. They are the people God called because that was his plan. God has a greater plan, and sometimes we can't always see that plan. The disciples didn't see the plan, how Jesus dying on the cross could help us, but it saved us from our sins. It's hard when bad things happen, and, and, it's, and it makes us wonder what good can come from this. But a lot of times God will do amazing things through hard times. 
My mom passed away several years ago, and I didn't understand why it had to happen. I didn't understand why she had to get sick and, and why, um, why that bad thing had to happen. But now I look back and I see how the last three years of her life were amazing. She spent time with my dad traveling. She went and saw all her grandkids and she, she went and she told other people who were sick about Jesus. And she used her, uh, her sickness and, and what she was going through as a way to minister to other people and tell them about Jesus. God gave her strength that none of us knew was even possible. All that happened is because God used a bad thing to help my mom. Now, there's other bad things that happen and we wonder why they happen. And a lot of times it's because of sin. Sometimes it's things you can't control like sickness or weather or something like that. But other times it's sin. We don't know why we had to be hurt or why we hurt somebody else. We don't know why something got stolen from us or why someone's picking on us. And all of that goes back to sin. We know that God gives us something called free will. It means that we have to make the choices to do the right thing or the wrong thing. And that when we do the right thing, we have less consequences from sin. But when we do the wrong things, we have more. But whether it's caused by sin or whether it's caused by something outside of our own power or strength, what we can know is that God can work out bad things for good. No matter what the situation is, if we put our trust in God, He will make it work out. He will make it be for the best of His kingdom. And the good news is that no matter how bad it gets in this world, we know that in the world to come, in heaven, we are to live perfectly with God without any pain and sickness. It's going to be amazing. And the only way to get there is by believing in Jesus. Mr. Anyway and Miss Megan are telling other people that good news. They're telling other people how God works the bad things out for good. They're telling other people about how their sin is making their lives so much worse, but that if they follow God, He will make their lives better. So this is a great time for you to bring money forward for Mr. Anyway and Miss Megan, and you can do that during this song. So let's watch our song, and you can bring your money forward. Let's learn the books of the Bible. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Kings, 1st and 2nd Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther. Job and Psalms and Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Songs. We're gonna learn the books of the Bible. We're gonna learn the books of the Bible. We're gonna learn the books of the Bible because we love God's Word. Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, and Daniel. Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah. the Old Testament. We're gonna learn the books of the Bible. We're gonna learn the books of the Bible. We're gonna learn the books of the Bible because we love God's Word. You guys are doing great, but let's speed it up for the New Testament. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Acts, and Romans, 1st and 2nd Corinthians, Galatians, and Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1st and 2nd Thessalonians, 1st and 2nd Timothy, Titus, and Philemon. We're gonna learn the books of the Bible. We're gonna learn the books of the Bible. We're gonna learn the books of the Bible because we love God's Word. Let's keep going, everybody. Hebrews and James. Hebrews, James, 1st and 2nd Peter, 1st, 2nd, 3rd John, Jude and Revelation, oh yeah, we did it, that's the New Testament, we're gonna learn the books of the Bible, we're gonna learn the books of the Bible, we're gonna learn the books of the Bible, because we love God's Word. Now we know the books of the Bible, now we know the books of the Bible, now we know the books of the Bible, because we love God's Word. Because we love God's Word. 
thank you so much for bringing that forward. Thank you for giving money towards that well. Just like Jesus dying on the cross, it was hard. It didn't make sense to his disciples. He was scared and nervous and, and, and he was uh, really, he didn't want to do it, but then he knew that that's what it took. He knew God had a plan. And that is the same thing we have to trust, that God has a plan. Even when things go bad, even when things seem at their worst, we can trust that God will work everything out. We can sing to God and we can be happy because we can put our trust in Him. He has saved us. He took away our sins and we can trust in Him. Guys, I hope you put your trust in God this week. I hope that you tell other people about how even when things are bad, God is there with Him. And sometimes we all we can do is just say, God, I'm broken and I need you and I'm putting my trust in you. And then we can watch how God works. I hope you remember that God loves you and that Jesus loves you and that I love you. I hope you have a great week. Bye.